So there I was, listening to my wonderful sound system in my cave. And I take my phone and I go back on Canuck Audio. And one of the sellers that I follow, which is a friend of mine, has posted something new. What did he post? He posted an integrated amplifier with 211 tubes. Damn, I got curious. Never heard of the, the brand before. Melody. There it is. I never heard of it before. So I went and did some research, looked it up. So apparently the, uh, the transformers they use in this are Japanese transformers. They are beefy. They are big. And I mean big. And they're heavy. So if I were to compare size, this thing is, is significantly bigger than the Doge 10. It's significantly bigger than the R8. It's it rivals more in size the Wilsonton R800. It's similar. It's much more similar, and so is the weight. I mean, this is close to 90 pounds. What it also has that caught my attention um, was the fact that it uses high-quality Mundorf capacitors in the single path, or not every amplifier does that. But I guess that explains also the price tag of one of these things. I think they hover around eight or nine thousand dollars. So I had to have it. All right, sure enough, let's do this. Um, yeah, I know I just got in the Doge 8. Uh, I didn't talk about all the amplifiers I used with the Doge 8. I used lots of them, but that's it's kind of besides the point for now. Maybe one day I'll do a full. A full listing of the amplifiers I tried with the Doge 8 and let you guys know which ones I thought were better than the ones that were not. Maybe. We'll see. It's not enough time. So I got this thing, brought it over, uh, threw my back out after bringing it over for about a week and a half. No joke. Um, yeah, my back was out. This thing, this thing's heavy. And I think it's also because I had just finished evaluating the Wilsonton R800. So I had to carry around the 800, which was 100 pounds, and then this thing, which is close to 90 pounds. Yeah, I threw my back out. What can I say? Always a good excuse to lie in bed and have a drink. No, I don't drink. Um, so anyways, I, um, I got this home, plugged it in, first night with these speakers, fell in love again. I didn't know I could love the performance of these speakers more than I already did because those 300B mono blocks with audio note uh, tubes in it was glorious with the Doge as well. Obviously the Doge was contributing greatly. Um, but man, when I brought this over and I'm, I was again confirmed that my crush on the 840 file style tubes like the larger tubes that I got when I first heard the Cayenne 845A in this room confirmed I love the bigger tubes more than I do the small tubes no matter what um, and I can still say that even though I currently have in my room not here on display right now one of what I would call one of the more refined smaller tube amplifiers you can buy today and it is stellar but still my personal taste lies with these big fat tubes what can I say I like big fat things because they give a big fat sound a big fat sound stage a big fat mid-range big fat sparkly highs but not that big fat of a bass surprisingly tight really is so a couple weeks of listening to this and of course my little brain says hey I know you enjoy these a lot but those are stock tubes you got in there yeah and well didn't you just buy audio note tubes and spent the fortune on them and you were like wow this is amazing what's all that talk about super tweeter bu bullshit maybe I should buy Super 211 tubes. So I did. That's right. I ordered tubes. Not these. This is just an example of a KT88. Next to a KT150. Oh my goodness. 
I can't do with this. What am what am I what am I doing? <gasps> I'm touching tubes with my bare hands. Give me a minute. So I bought some tubes. I bought super super 211 tubes. But before we talk about those, so we have an example of a KT88. You can make this stand without it falling. Can I? Nope. Well, let's not go there. So since the internet doesn't want us to touch tubes with our fingers, I'm just going to grab it by the base here. So you have a KT88. You have a KT150. Let's put the KT88 away. We have a 150. Next to a typical 211. Big tube. So, from my experience, these large tubes, I find when you have a good synergy in the components, anyways, when I had a good synergy with my components, these always shined more. Whether it was A45s and now these 211s and even the 300Bs. So, naturally, after my experience with the Audio Note 300Bs, I absolutely had to see what a super 211 tube would be like. Enter this lovely pair of Linlay tubes. So, if we look at them, I'm going to compare. These Linlay tubes are bigger, even in size, than the stock ones. From what you can tell, look, they are fatter. These I can stand up next to each other. See the difference? Now watch me smash them. Where's my hammer? Hammer, messy garage, find my hammer in the messy garage. Where's my hammer? Ha <laughs> ha, there it is. Gotcha. Okay, this is worth it. This is worth it. Your video is going to go viral. This is worth it. This is worth it. It's going to go viral. Nobody smashed a thousand dollar tube on YouTube before. One, two, three. It didn't even break. Did I smash those tubes? Did I? Tell the truth. Did I smash them? Tell everybody the truth. Did I? Yes or no? No, I didn't smash those tubes. Of course I didn't smash those tubes. They're, they're alive and well in the amplifier. All right, so let's go back to the melody and let's just... Um, I'm going to share the impressions, the difference between the stock tubes that are in there versus when I put the Linlay Elite 211 tubes. Oh yeah. So the stock tubes, from you can try through, I try always try to represent it with an image. I'm going to try and do that going forward and hopefully I get better at it and get to visualize my impressions a little bit more of what I'm hearing. Yeah, that's right. I'm visualizing what I'm hearing until the day I make capable of affording a really good microphone so that then I can just record sound bites and you guys can hear it for yourself. So impressions with the stock tubes, the 211 stock tubes with the melodies, uh, it's, it's very warm. Um, that it's actually, it's quite warm. It was the image was very warm. The mid range was very prominent. Um, it gave a little bit of softer edges in the in the imaging. Um, the imaging itself also seemed to have more of a center focus, meaning the items that had the best resolution seemed to be very focused in the center, uh, where you're still aware of what's going on around you on the stage, uh, but it felt like the focus was definitely more in the center. Um, like brass instruments um, were pleasant to listen to. They were rich, but they were soft. So one could argue that that's not very realistic because a brass instrument in person doesn't sound soft. Um, it's, it's, it's got a lot more 
a lot, a lot more bite. Um, the the drums had a had a lot of color to them, which which I like, uh, and they were potent. Like you had a attack was decent, uh, but you could tell that there was a coloring in there, and the, you, it sort of rolled off a little bit in the low end and the the and in the low details. But I was okay. Um, the strings sounded nice, but they were nice and smooth. Um, when you dealt with a bad recording, you didn't have that much of distractions. So the mistakes in the bad recordings weren't so apparent. Yeah, they were there if you really wanted to listen to them. But otherwise, sounded good. And as for the vocals, well, um, just rich and emotional, but without that little, like I said in my last video, like without that effect of feeling the singer's saliva. <laughs> um, all right, and so if we switch over to the now the Linlay tubes, and you can tell by the image, things have changed a little bit, just a little bit. Um, you're now looking more of a balanced, balanced presentation with just a hint of warmth. Um, it doesn't feel as warm as the other one, but I think that's because everything's a bit more balanced. Uh, before you had, like, I think the previous one cranked up the mid-range and slightly lowered the highs and, and the lows, whereas the Linlay tubes kind of brings everything up onto the same platter. So right away you get that impression of, um, of, of a tone that's a little bit more close to a neutral tone, but there is still a hint of warmth, and, and so that means the mid-range and the upper bass is still still a little uh, prevalent. Um, you definitely had more definition in the image. The image feels like there's a lot more to look at and and that center focus is kind of gone now. Feels like the, the 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 scape is a lot more broad. You get you get more information out of the far left, far right, far back right, far back left. Um, even in the front, things seem to envelop you more, right? So you feel like you're more surrounded by things, which just cranks up the immersion and the sense of realism. Um, there's still a little bit of a grain, which I personally like. It gives, because I think, you know, the, the, that to be sound, that's, I guess that's where I'm, where I'm saying the word grain. Um, the brass instruments now still sound very rich, but you get a lot more vibrance out of them with a slight edge which is kind of what you would expect from a brass instrument. Like if you're facing a trombone or a trumpet, uh, it's it's in your face. Especially if you're sitting closer, like I'm describing with this with the the, the larger tubes compared to the the, the 300 Bs, feels like you're a lot closer to the to the instruments. The drums now had a lot less color than before, interestingly enough, but felt deeper, a lot stronger too. Um, the attacks had more bite, so when that snare kicked in, kicks in hard, you can feel it. You can even to the point where some of the drum hits. You, now with these tubes, I was feeling more of the skin on on the drums. Um, I can't say it was distracting. It just felt like I was more there. Um, so the focus, like I said, like the focus is so much wider now, um, much wider than it was with these stock tubes. Uh, the strings have a more realistic sound to them. And what I mean by that is um, they sounded good before, but what the realism that kicks in now is that now you get that sense of separation between the, 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 the strings and the wood behind it and the residence in the wood. You could actually, you kind of feel that or you're just more aware of it with these tubes. Um, it made for a, still a very rich vocals with Still a lot of emotion. None of that seems to go down. But now there's an ex there's an added sparkle to it. Does that mean you feel like a drop of saliva hit the microphone? Sometimes, maybe a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I, everything else was still there, so I'm okay with it. All right, bring on the saliva. It's all good. All good. If you say in the front stage, you might get some spray. That's all right. Um, the one thing though is that now when you listen to bad recordings, the mistakes in the bad recordings, or I guess the in, in the mastering or whatever you want to call it, sounded a little more obvious. They kind of stood out more. Um, I don't know if you ever noticed this in a track, and I'd like to highlight it one day. But I I've, I've, hear some music tracks occasionally. Whenever a new instrument come, kicks in, all of a sudden there's a different noise floor, and then when the instrument disappears, that noise floor disappears. It's almost as though like the instrument was recorded in a different 
on a different day in a different booth or a different studio sometimes. It's, it, not many recordings do this, but some of them, I, I don't know, I get to pick it up. Anyways, if you guys, if you guys have ever heard that, tell me what, in the comments which song you could hear that. Um, I'll, I'll try to find a couple and I'll link them also in my comments and I'll specify at what point in the track I hear that noise floor all of a sudden kick in when that instrument comes in and then it disappears when the instrument stops playing. I'll link it below. So there you have it. Uh, guys, thanks again. This was the melody. Now what the heck is up with all the DACs? What am I using for a source? Some of you have paid attention. You get to see that the source is always changing from one shot to the next. That's the next one. It's going to be a longer video. Might be a couple parter because I went through 24 DAX. No kidding. Am I going to talk about all 24 of them? Probably not. But see you next time.